Good afternoon, hello and welcome. You're watching CNN News 18 with me, Poonam Burde. The big story we're tracking at this hour is about India's central bank's significant move that has happened over the last few weeks. India has moved around 100 tons or 1 lakh kilograms of gold from the United Kingdom back to its vaults here in the country and intends to move more in the coming months. The transfer of the gold to domestic places was done both for logistical and for diverse storage purposes. This suggests that a comparable amount of gold may be entering the nation once more in the upcoming months. As per the reports, uh, the RBI has 822 tons of gold at the end of March, which 413 tons was held outside up until now. The RBI is among the central banks that has purchased golds in recent years. It has uh, added 27.5 tons in the last financial year alone. So this is a significant move as far as bringing back gold is concerned. Remember, this is the first time that this is happening after 1991. Pallavi, my colleague, now joining us, getting us more details. Pallavi, do put this in perspective for our viewers, the significance of uh, such a move. See, what the finance ministry says that normally the reason why India or any country pledges its gold, but we are going to talk specifically about India, it pledges its gold in overseas banks, in this case, for example, the Bank of England, also because of logistical purposes. But this is the first time since 1991. 1991 is considered to be a benchmark because India was going through a financial crisis and therefore it got, uh, it pledged our gold to Bank of England and that was not, and only because it wanted to have more fluidity in the market and they also wanted more money available in the system. I'm just breaking it down very simply in that sense. Now what has happened is there are multiple uh, messages or implications of it. First of all, though finance ministry sources say this is more of a logistical, logistical issue, which is why we're getting back 100 tons of gold from the Bank of England and they are going to be more which are going to be brought back. But what it's going to now do is it's going to make more gold available in the market, which means there is going to be a fiscal stability, which also means that we can pledge more and more expenditures and of course earn of revenue and therefore this is also seen as a symptom or sign of a buoyant economy and therefore in the backdrop of the SMP ratings which we saw recently a thumbs up being given by the RBI also in its survey of the GDP rates having gone up to 7% which is going to go up these are very positive signals as far as coming in from the government is concerned but emotionally speaking because gold holds a lot of emotive factor is getting our gold back which is the point which the government is trying to make. Right, now like you were pointing out, Pallavi, India is not the only country, there are several other countries in the world that uh, often do this, that uh, gold like this, uh, gold reserves like these are stored in other countries uh, for multiple reasons. What was the reason that we haven't had such a move uh, since 1991? Well, the main reason, of course, is that you keep on bringing it back very sporadically and it was felt that perhaps Indian economy was not so strong enough, which is why you had to kind of keep your gold reserves abroad, again, logistical reasons and for security reasons. There's also been a tweaking of the norms of getting the gold. I remember when the UPA came to power in 2014, was voted out of power in 2014. In the time gap between NDA taking charge and the UPA going out of power, there was this 80 to 20 percent rule which was implemented by the then finance minister and that essentially meant that even private players, private stockholders could actually get this gold back or purchase the gold. That was not seen as a very positive, clean or transparent system. The government is now trying to come out with this whole argument that this is a transparent, buoyant economy that we are looking at and today our earnings and rather our revenues and our fiscal strength is strong enough which is why we can afford to cut down on our gold reserves being parked overseas. So multiple reasons why this is significant, given that this comes on the eve of uh, the last phase of polling, is, that, is there a messaging that uh, the BJP or the government is trying to send here as well with this? Uh, economy is something that the opposition has often slammed the government on. Absolutely. And in fact, the SMP ratings that we are talking about, the fact that there is a projection which has been made by the RBI of a 7% GDP growth and now India being able to get back 100 tons of gold and more may be coming back in case the Modi government goes in for a third term is a very powerful messaging which the government is trying to give out that there has been in the post-COVID era a green shooting of the economy. In India's economic system is robust, it's strong and therefore the opposition's narrative that you know the government doesn't want to talk about the economy because it's on a soft spot is completely unsubstantiated. How much impact it's really going to have on the last day of polling, that's something that remains to be seen. But yes, deep down, a very strong message that there is a Vixit Bharat. That's what the BJP is saying. This is going to be the benchmark for this entire slogan of Vixit Bharat given by the Prime Minister. 
And that's really the kind of messaging that the BJP wants to push forth with, uh, specifically as far as economy is concerned. We are expecting uh, this quarter's numbers, uh, GDP numbers to be out this evening as well. Uh, Pallavi? Yes, absolutely. Later this evening, 5.30 p.m., post 5.30 p.m., this is what we've been told, that the GDP uh, quarter figures will be out. Also, the survey which has been done by the RBI, and one part of it is already out, which talks about the 7% uh, uh, growth rate of the GDP. So, uh, you know, and also uh, the kind of S&P ratings, we keep talking about that. You know, these are overseas global ratings which are given, which use several benchmarks to give a kind of a projection as far as the strength of the Indian economy is concerned. So, I think these are going to be very important uh, figures and statistics which are going to be output and armed with this, the government certainly, or rather the BJP certainly hopes that in the penultimate stage of the Lok Sabha elections, it could work for them. That's the kind of messaging that the BJP is hoping for. Whether this is something that uh, is on the voters' mind or not, uh, many would suggest that this perhaps is uh, the larger subject of debate. It is about the optics of where India is going and it's not really something that the voter really votes on. Uh, the opposition, meanwhile, have we had any reactions from them, uh, Pallavi, over this development? Well, I mean, we are just waiting for more and more aggressive reactions really coming in from the opposition parties. But they've always been very cynical, Poonam, as far as the government stories or government statistics and data is concerned. When Moody's and SMP ratings give a thumbs up to India's economy, the opposition parties, particularly the Congress and Mr. Chidambaram as a finance minister, the former finance minister, is very uh, mocking and he taunts and says these figures are not reflecting the real picture. Uh, everywhere the opposition parties have been going, their narrative has been job losses, unemployment of course and then uh, and how they are rising prices and how the government is actually shielding the real picture uh, of the state or the economy which is actually benefiting only a handful of corporates or few players and therefore the real people which is the common man is actually not getting benefit of the claims which are coming in from the government. That's the kind of messaging that the opposition wants to push forth with. Uh, for now, we haven't really heard much from them as far as this development goes. But this definitely shows confidence around the world as far as India's economy is concerned. We're also talking about economies in the post-COVID era, where even when most of uh, the developing countries uh, were seeing a downward slump as far as their economy went, India managed to keep it stable. That's also something that uh, the BJP and the central government often speaks of. In fact, today we had the finance minister go out and uh, give a report card of sorts uh, as well of how the economy has done well over the last 10 years and the kind of steps that were taken by this government to keep it that way, Pallavi. We'll try and uh, reconnect that line with my colleague Pallavi who's getting us more details. But uh, like I mentioned, it's not just about this one particular uh, development, but it's also about the green shoots that we're seeing as far as the Indian economy goes. Over the last three days, we've had uh, several ratings agencies, including Goldman Sachs and S&P, that have upgraded India's outlook. The RBI had upgraded India's uh, projections for the GDP as well. We would, of course, be getting the last quarter GDP ratings this evening. While all this is happening, India has moved 1 lakh kilograms of gold from UK vaults back to India. This definitely shows confidence in India's growth story.